That wasn't good. I am not having a good morning, and I think I need more lighting. I'll be back. I would like to take this moment to feel sorry for myself. Yes. I don't know what the heck's wrong with my neck, but it is so bad. Oh, I can barely move my neck. And it's just aching, aching, throbbing. Oh, mercy. Do you think embroidery has anything to do with it? I've been working very, very slowly on this. Want to see my progress? I'm making this. It's hopefully going to look like this. Now it's stuck to my... It's hopefully going to look like this when I'm done. Though I have done a little bit of freestyling on two of the flowers. Which one's that one? I just, I just kind of like um, line stitched it in. Yeah. That one I did the spider weave. That one I did a spider weave and some um, loop stitching and then some line stitching this one was looks like it's all spider weave and the rest the same and then i got french knots <sighs> takes time jeez um and the other thing is my neck hurts <laughs> oh see this is part of my physical problem. Uh, you know, the band gave me energy, the frequency band, and it, I was like kicking butt and taking names for three weeks. Oh, and then the spasm started. I'm sorry if I sip my coffee. It's so hot, and I like coffee. figure it hurts all right I'm done complaining I wonder if the heat helps or makes it worse because I got my heating pad here oh dear the pillowcase came off it's a particularly long one and I I don't know what I ever did with the case when I first moved from Maine to here Dennis always used this one Poor, poor Dennis. Oh my. I think it's so unfair that he got somebody to care for him and I need someone to care for me and I don't have anybody. I mean, I got my kids, but what am I supposed to say? Come over here and kiss my butt? Oh, oh. This muscle here is so tight. Oh, okay. I'm done again. Oh, maybe I shouldn't make one this morning. I'm so miserable. Um, I have an ad addendum to the wig giveaway. I didn't think about shipping other than the lower 48. You know, when you're doing YouTube, you forget that there's people from all over the world watching. I can't ship all over the world. What would that cost? China is like 65 bucks to send anything back. I can't do that. Okay, so that's done with. Yeah, because I was going to try to send. That's why you should always make sure when you order anything online that it is not going to be returned directly to China. Something's crawling around either on top of my roof, under my trailer, or in my wall. And it's really making me crazy. Oh my gosh, is this a complaining video? Yes! I should have made a disclaimer. I'll make a disclaimer in the title. Complaining video. All right. So, yesterday, thanks to TMUSA, I did a whole 30 minutes on my homeschooling experience with the first three. Now, the next one was going to be a lot different because 
I was a lot different. I was more relaxed. I wasn't trying to compete with the other accelerated Christian homeschoolers. Oh, God. Yeah, d don't compete, okay? If you're a younger woman watching this and you're thinking about homeschooling, don't try to compete and don't fall for the fads and, you know, oh, because I'm schooling, we're going to do it better than a public school. It's in my opinion, homeschooling is always better than the public school. Why? Because you can use all sorts of learning styles. Now, schools are getting better. A lot of them are like award-winning schools. And if you're in one of those and they're innovative, creative, and not so attached to the national education, whatever they are, A, N, E, A, and the, you know, all of those guys. Um, if they have more freedom in their particular state, county, city, some of them are excellent at using all learning styles. Some people can just you know, they just have like this incredible memory and Finn is like that. He totally blows my mind. He started reading like really, really, I, I think it was before age two, maybe he was like one and a half and, and he could recognize Maggie really worked with him too. And they have so many educational videos on YouTube now. I mean, you can teach your kid on videos alone. You don't even have to spend a dime. I, I kid you not. I'm amazed. Most of what Finn learned up to this point is from YouTube videos. Darn right. He knows like... And then of course Michael and Maggie worked with him a lot. Taught him the... He knows the... Uh, what the heck do you call those? You know, the sections of the world... Uh, uh, oh, for God's sake. Continents. Thank you. Brain, hello? Continents. He knows the... Co I don't know the continents, but he knows the continents. It's crazy. And, uh, yeah. So, what was I saying? Oh, my God. Bring it back in. Bring it back in. My poor mind. Oh, and my poor neck. Oh, mercy. Oh, what am I going to do? I'm going to have to spend another day on a heating pad. This is terrible. Oh. So I took my bracelet off yesterday. Oh, my God, no. Make that for another video. Back to homeschooling. Right. So what was I saying? Ah. Oh. Homeschooling Bonnie. We'll just skip around here. And if I screw up anywhere and if I started to tell a story and then I went left, leave it in the comments and I'll correct it in the next video. Gracious. So, so you know, I was like <laughs> old when I had Bonnie. I was 41. Holy Toledo. Dennis. Anyway, takes two to tango. Oops. So, um, yeah, I was, I was older. I was calmer. I wasn't as taken away with, you know, it was like, who gives a damn I'm on my way? You know, um, was that paint your wagon? Oh God, I love paint your wagon. That, I think that is probably my all time most favorite movie in the world. I loved its irreverence <laughs> because, you know, it just was hilarious, okay? From, from the crazy wandering star to the farmer who was played by Clint Eastwood and the, uh, all the crazy characters. Oh, and the music and the songs. <gasps> I would have loved to have been in a musical. Mariah. I'm not a man, but oh, that song. Have you ever listened to that guy sing? Ah, oh, he had the most incredible voice. Ah, oh, 
Yeah. Okay. So anyway, of course, Clint Eastwood could not sing and neither could Lee Marvin, but it just was so good. It was so good. I love that movie. I need to own that movie. Kids, that's what you could get me for Christmas this year. I would like paint your wagon. Thank you. Okay. So, um, back to homeschooling. <laughs> right. Um, what was I saying? I was 41 when I gave birth to Bonnie. Oh my God. Let me tell you, that was a rough birth. And recovering was so much harder in my 40s. Holy cow. I was like, uh, I'll talk about that another time. Probably not. Anyway, um, so, oh, good. I got 36 minutes, so we're good here. Oh, getting hot. Oh, 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 it goes my arm. Oh, and this is why, this is why when you have stenosis, you should never try to clean your own trailer. Oh, mercy. See, I mean... It, it didn't even affect me the first few days. And then little by little, it crept up on me. And now I'm totally screwed. Oh. oh, and this is why I can't work a job. Do you get it? You crazy people get a job. I would love a job. A job would save my butt. Oh, I can't even bend my neck down anymore. Wait a minute. It's easier if I brace one arm on this table. Oh, God. Oh, I wonder if I should even do this video. Mm, okay, so where was I at? I can't move my neck. Damn. So. Oh, my. This is pathetic. So, uh, yeah. I think I'm hot. Hang on a minute. I'll be right. This is terrible. 12 minutes and I haven't even gotten to the point yet, have I? Not really. One minute. I need to do something. This is not a good day. Hey, y'all. You can pray for me and my neck and my arm and whatever else is about to go into spasm. I think I'm going to need a meloxicam. Poo! Okay, back to homeschooling. So, Bonnie and homeschooling. So, giving birth to her, you know, it was really a tough go. And um, she was a, a shoulder dystocia. And uh, that poor little thing. She had to be resuscitated by the midwife. It was very frightening because it was a home birth. Um, and uh, because Bonnie's uh, uh, upper arm broke during birth the midwife took her to the um that poor midwife she did my whole birth for five hundred dollars god bless her you know for years i sent her money every christmas because she saved my bonnie's life i really do believe that that was the time that they were using them damn suction things to pull babies out and da brain damaging babies and i said you know, I wanted to go to the hospital. I was in so much pain from this birth. I said, something's wrong. Something's wrong. I know something's wrong. She said, no, look, you got to push through this. You, she says, yeah, it hurts. You got to, this was different. This birth was so different. Like every time I tried to push, it felt like somebody was going through me with a sword. It was the most horrible thing and I'd have to stop pushing she was facing the wrong way yes yeah, so the baby at birth I think is supposed to be facing forward but she was facing my back and that could have been because of the accident I had been in uh, the year before her birth and um, not even and um, you know Things probably weren't sitting quite right in in my posture as well. And I remember the we stopped in Las Vegas and uh, 
we, we were going to use the midwives in Las Vegas. They had a birthing room. And we were like, hey, that's ideal because we were on the road. Oh, my God. That's a whole nother story. <laughs> I do not want to. You will think I'm nuts. So we were on the road. <laughs> and she told me every day, I don't care what, you know, take 15 minutes and get on all your fours and let your stomach drop and see if we can get that baby to turn around because she shouldn't be facing the back. And it was those good midwives that uh, took the ultrasound and we found out we were having a girl. And we went back to, uh, we were staying in a camper. We had a camper, um, a little Shasta, 26 foot. Uh, we were staying at a casino in Laughlin, Nevada. What a crazy, what a crazy family. Rachel said, if they had virtual uh, reality back then, we could have had a TV show. That would have been scary. So, um, because, you know, we were all a little nuts. So, um, yeah, would have definitely been interesting. So, uh, yeah, and, and they had a Carter's. If they'd only stay little till the Carters wore out. They had a Carters there at Laughlin, Nevada. And when I found out we were having a girl, we went in. I bought some stuff, but I did buy one that was supposed to be for a boy. But it was so adorable. It had elephants on it. It was little blue suspender pants. And it had this elephant on it. And then uh, it was a little elephant shirt that went underneath it. And I had to have that in addition to bunnies and some other stuff. And... um. <clears throat> So Dennis let me go on a little shopping spree and, and buy a few things for a new baby girl. Yeah. Good old days. So um, I started, I wanted Super Baby. So I went to the library and I got books about raising a super baby. And um, I just wanted to expand her mind. So there was a lot of good music while I was pregnant and classical and, um, you know, just really good stuff. And, and then when she was born and she was able to go in the baby swing, um, I cut and made the patterns in this book, black and white, geometric, different shapes, and she would swing and she would look at those shapes. And that was like the first part of, I guess, increasing, I guess, the brain's ability to think and process and probably wonder, you know, and she just loved it. And then I noticed she was quite aware of everything. I mean, she opened my eyes up to the beauty of the world and nature. She, I take her outside and there were these branches that came out onto the deck. We were in Idaho at that time in Sandpoint and she would look so intently at a leaf, a leaf, a leaf on a tree and a branch. And I'd have to look too to see what was she seeing and and the wonder of it all became so real to me. I could see through her eyes that this is an amazing planet with amazing things right in front of our eyes. We miss it, don't we? Oh, there's a tree. You know, but when she was absorbing this, I'd absorb it with her. So that's how I started. I started reading right away, you know, what could I do? And I play the games with her and I can't remember them now, but um, I just wanted to give her every benefit in life. And I'm not talking about financial, though I really do believe 
that working with her the way I did probably gave her the opportunities that would come later. So that's a baby I started. And I was always like that with my children, though. I always played and wanted to show them different things and always bought toys that would expand their mind and, you know, educational things, things for learning, things for discovering. That was pretty much my homeschool philosophy, and I didn't even know it at the time, was that I just wanted to expose them to everything, everything I possibly could to make them think, to make them imagine, to let them play. And I'm so glad I did. If I could do anything differently, it would have been to relax and let it happen and not force it like I did at first with the first three. Once I let go and I trusted their ability to learn no matter what, and I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> I seriously do believe that if you taught a child absolutely nothing, but you gave them the tools to learn, they would learn it, including reading, writing, math. It's all in what's surrounding them. Sure, if you take a kid and you don't teach them and sit them in front of a TV set, they may pick up some words anyway, they might, but that's not a tool unless you're doing educational videos. And that's a whole nother subject. What they have out today is phenomenal. I, I feel like you don't even need a curriculum. You could just have like a, a, a guideline and, and they would learn if you gave them the resources to do it. Now, algebra is a whole nother story. Holy moly. Algebra. Oh, I can't even imagine that my daughter did trigonometry. Did she do trigonometry? God, she was a daring little thing. The girl did well. So let me go backwards. So she was having, when we started like what I'll call formal schooling, and I did buy a curriculum. What did I buy? It was a Christian thing, and I can't remember what it was. Was it Bob Jones? I don't know, but... I remember one of the first books was uh, Pilgrim's Pilgrim's Progress. No, no, it was, you know, the shipwreck one. Robinson Crusoe, thank you. And um, she didn't want to read. So I read it. I said, okay, I'll read and you follow the words, okay? Put her little finger and I'd read and she'd follow the words. And that's how we did it, because she didn't want to read it. She was having trouble. And um, we just kept working on the sounds, and I had this book, um, Teach Your Child to Read in 100 Days. I think I still have that book. The Finn will definitely not need it. He's already quite a reader. He totally blows my mind. He'll pick up a book and just start reading it. I mean, he's like beyond second grade level, five years old. And uh, so she was having a hard time reading and she was also having a hard, she just was having a hard time with formal education. And so when math became a big deal and a problem, um, I found videos online, math videos, and they would do the addition, subtraction, they do the problems and she'd press the buttons to answer the question. If she could get 100% on a series, she could then play a little game. It was little penguins that would slide down. She loved this game. And um, I'm not quite sure how it went, but it was a little penguin game. And she was able to memorize through that her addition and subtraction. But 
she had a lot of trouble with memory, you know, a lot like me, um, a lot like uh, Rachel has trouble with memory. And uh, so we had to work on it and work on it and work on it. And if I tried to advance, try to teach anything else other than the basic facts, and, and I have to say one thing about that, if your child's having trouble in math, go back to the basic facts, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, because it's the foundation. If they can't memorize those, they're going to have a hard time. And so we had to keep going back and going back and going back and, you know, doing it over and over. So I made sure she spent 15 minutes a day just on basic facts because she would not be able to retain it for whatever reason. And, um, so then we were like moving ahead. It was full speed ahead and we were doing fantastic. And then we got to fractions and oh my God, I just couldn't reach her. She just didn't get it. And I went through like this book and that book and, and it wasn't happening. And uh, I don't even know if we tried anything online. I'm sure I did, and it still wasn't happening. So being the person I am, I love to research. I started researching online. And that's when I found Key Curriculum. And it's still there. I found it. Key 2 Curriculum. And they do all the weird stuff, like uh, you know, division and, and geometry and pre-algebra, all that stuff. And they have a series on fractions, which is totally amazing. And I so would recommend it if your child or your grandchild is having trouble with fractions. And I actually bought the curriculum for her and for a young man who uh, their mother, I didn't realize that the mother didn't want to homeschool him. She wanted me to homeschool him. And he was very bright. And I said, he doesn't need me. Um, he can do this on his own, but he got very lonely, I guess. And so he ended up um, going back to school, but we got him through his problem with fractions as well through this curriculum. Um, very, like it's 10, a series of 10 books, I believe. And uh, she went through that with flying colors and she grasped it and we were able to move on because we were having a real problem with fifth grade math. And then after that, uh, I got a, a pre-algebra book, and um, I didn't realize that it was too hard to understand, but she was doing it anyway. And um, when we were first going to put her... Okay, so what happened was is we had a, a, a crisis of sorts um, with her. She was very depressed, and she said she wanted to go to public school. And so we were in Florida for that winter, and I said... Uh, Okay, but, you know, I'm going to be gone April 15th. And we were all living together. My sons, Maggie was living there at the time. Bonnie, me and Dennis. It was a big house in Hudson, Florida. And so I enrolled her in eighth grade. Or was it seventh? Was it eighth? Did she do two years? I can't remember. Seventh grade, I think. I think she did seventh and eighth in public school in Florida. And um, the teacher said to me about that algebra book, I said, you know, we were having trouble. She says, this is, this is too difficult. She said, I, I don't understand how she made it through it. And then Bonnie sprung forth in public school and she was winning awards and uh accolades and um ahead of her class she was just doing beautifully and i i believe she did seventh and eighth grade at that same school and then she got in with the wrong kid and uh i said she's not going to high school down here dennis and we already had the house in maine Milo, Maine, and because uh, I didn't want her going to the high school in Milo either, 
Um, nothing against those people. It's just, it wouldn't have been the right atmosphere for her because she was already experimenting with marijuana because of Florida and who she was involved in. And I just was scared for her. So um, I brought her home to Maine. I had to pay an exorbitant amount to get her in a charter school in the next town because you had to live in that town to be able to go to it or you had to pay. But because I was a Mainer and just in the next town, same county, I got a discount. Now that school is 75000 a year, if not more this year, um, if you're a foreign student. They have dormitories. They really expanded it, the uh, Foxcroft Academy in Dover Foxcroft. And so that ended her homeschool career, and she really did very well in high school. And then she won uh, a scholarship to... Franklin and Marshall College in Lancaster, PA. And they paid for most of her schooling because Dennis got sick when she was a sophomore. And pretty much our income ended then. And because we were so poor, she got the Gray Scholarship and owes about $5,000 on four years of college. So that was, you know, probably God's hand definitely. And that's another 30 minute video. Plus a lot of it was a lot of bull crap from the beginning. My neck is slightly loosening and I won't be doing much today. And I don't think I'll be embroidering either, but that's my whole homeschool story though. It's not everything, but it's a lot of it with some anecdotes and recommendations thrown in. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. The high school dropout teaches her own kids. Go figure. All right, I'm done. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.